Good evening, everyone. It's the Board of Trustees <coughs> regular meeting. It's April 24th, 2018. The time is 7.30, time is 7.30 p.m. Uh, excuse me, 7.32 p.m. This is meeting number 2018-09. Could you please take the roll? President Barry? Here. Trustee Olenichik? Here. Trustee Desmond? Here. Trustee Phelan? Here. Trustee Vorder um, is in Springfield representing the village. Trustee Strait? Yes. And Trustee Stalker is also in Springfield representing the village. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Would everyone rise for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, item uh, three tonight is public comments. We have one public commenter who signed in, uh, Mike Surf. Mike, you're going to talk about the Blue Ribbon Walk. Uh, would you care to come up, sir? Thanks. We need you to say your name, let us know if you live in Oak Lawn, and then you have three minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My name is Mike Surf. I do live in Oak Lawn. And I'm here just to ask the board for approval for our fourth year in a row to do the Blue Ribbon Walk. And what we're doing is just uh, get out by Lakeshore Park and show the police and firemen that we appreciate for what they do for our village. So when is it? It's going to be June 2nd. At what time? It's going to be about 11 o'clock we'll meet, 12 o'clock will be the walk. And uh, there's other things going on at the same time. There are, yes. We've got about 15 different people, uh, uh, people that are... Um, supporting us so there's we got a jumpy house it's going to be there for the kids so come on out and bring the kids also there's a uh, fresh line is donating about 500 hot dogs so it's uh -oh. going to be a great day to come out and just have a good time and the uh, only change that's going to happen that I'm going to ask you guys for approval for and then work with the streets of sanitation and also with the police department is um, to change the walk pattern this year the so last year we went over the bridge down and around the lake, came up to Edison, and then in Robertson, I believe, uh, the park. But instead, this year, I'd like to um, take us back around the lake and come back up over the bridge. So it's just going to be about three blocks from where it was last. Okay. And how long altogether is the walk? How long? About 11 blocks, just a little over little over a mile not quite a mile and a very half. nice so it's an easy walk and everyone's welcome and everybody's uh, yeah everybody's welcome come on out and support our police fire and all first responders thank you You're welcome thank you and where is this at lakeshore park, lakeshore park. where is that that's uh just adjacent to fresh line foods at like a 50 I, I don't know the exact address. So it's behind um, Style 95 and Fresh Line over there. And, yeah, we're, yeah, uh, right just there. just south of 95th Street. Yeah, it's Oaklawn Lake. Lake Oaklawn Lake. Oaklawn Lake. Lake yeah. Shore Park, we call it for like our whole <laughs> lives. <laughs> <laughs> Oaklawn Lake. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. See you there, sir. Thank you. Thank you. That's our only public comment. Item four is conflict of interest disclosure. Does anyone have a conflict to disclose with any item on tonight's agenda? <coughs> Hearing none, we're going to move on. Uh, Oakland Police Department Life Saving Award. Um, I'd like to call Chief uh, Palmer up to the podium, sir. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank the board for allowing us the time for uh, to recognize these special people that we're going to recognize tonight. I'd like to start by bringing up Officer Joel Bess. I know I've seen him. Here we go. I'm going to start with the uh, commendation award that uh, Officer Bess earned. On 2 24 at 1648 hours, Officer Joel Bess was dispatched to Jules, located at 9424 South Pulaski in reference to a retail theft. While en route, Officer Bess and responding units were advised by dispatch of the offender's description and that when the loss prevention officer attempted to detain the offender, the offender pulled out a box cutter with the razor blade extended and displayed it to the LP officer. The offender then fled northbound from the store on foot. Officer Bess arrived in the area and began searching for the offender. He located a subject who matched the description of the person Pulaski, attempting to cross Pulaski into Evergreen Park. Officer Bess exited his squad and gave the offender verbal commands to stop, and he complied and put his hands up. 
Officer Best was able to detain the offender to do a show up. The LP officer was brought to the scene and positively identified the subject as the offender for retail theft. The offender was subsequently transported to the Oakland Police Department lockup. Officer Best spoke further with the LP officer who related that the subject picked up a bottle of Jameson whiskey and a bottle of Jose Cuervo from the shelf and concealed the bottles in his jacket. The offender then proceeded to the front of the store past all points of purchase without rendering payment and exited the store. LP officer approached the offender, identified himself as store security and asked the offender for the liquor. The offender turned around toward the LP officer, displayed an opened box cutter with the razor blade extended. LP again asked for the liquor and the offender handed him the bottle of Jose Cuervo. LP decided to cut his losses and allow the offender to flee rather than getting cut by the offender. Officer Bess and Detective Lutsky interviewed the offender after he waived his Miranda right. The offender admitted to stealing the liquor but denied displaying the open box cutter toward loss prevention. Felony Review was contacted and after interviewing all the subjects involved, they approved a felony charge of armed robbery with a dangerous weapon. Officer Bess's quick response to the area and keen attention to duty thwarted the escape of a potentially dangerous felon. Based on the aforementioned facts, Officer Joe Best is most deserving of Oklahoma Police Department commendation. And these are just a few of the things that uh, the men and women of the Oklahoma Police Department do on a daily basis that we don't give awards for. But So with this next one, um, i got to give a little background story on this. Um, when I took over as chief in August of 2017, we did not have a life-saving I was uh, approached by one of my division chiefs who was actually in the audience, uh, Division Chief Finley, and he said, hey, this is one of those things that I think rises to the level a little bit more of a commendation medal, which what we have in the department, and a little less than our award of valor, which we give for an officer getting injured in the line of duty while he's actually performing the duties. So we decided, let's make this award. So we did. So I'd like to invite up, besides Officer Joel Bess, Officer Mike Lupa, and um, one of the citizens, citizens who was involved in this incident, Mr. Robert Philbin. I'd also, I so also like to ask uh, our uh, assistant or uh, acting fire chief, uh, Bob Tutko, to step up. Again, thank you very much. Great job. Great job. So, on March 16, 2018, Officer Mike Lupin and Officer Joel Best responded to the Oakland Racket Club for a subject who had become unconscious due to an unknown medical condition. Oh, before I start, um, I'm looking for. Um, my, uh, my victim. Is my victim here? Can you step up for me too as well? I am, I apologize. And I am so glad that you are here. So glad that you were here. Thank you guys. So with that, let me start again. On March 16, 2018, Officer Mike Loop and Officer Joel Best responded to the Oakland Racket Club for a subject who had become unconscious due to an unknown medical condition. Upon Officer Lupa's arrival, he entered the building and was directed to one of the racquetball courts. Pretty adamant racquetball player. Yes. Officer Lupa observed a male victim laying on the ground with another subject performing CPR. Officer Lupa was advised by the subject now known as Robert Philbin that he was okay to continue chest compressions on the victim. While Officer Lupa began setting up the AED, Officer Bess arrived and took over chest compressions on the victim. Officer Lupa attached the chest pads to the victim and the AED indicated no pulse. Officer Lupa delivered one shock which produced a few breaths from the victim. Officer Best continued CPR until paramedics arrived on scene moments later. The victim was transported to Christ Hospital and it was learned he had suffered a heart attack but had survived. Due to the heroic efforts of Officer Lupa, Officer Bess, Robert Philbin, and the Oakland Fire Department, the victim survived a near-death experience. Any response to an emergency is inherently stressful. Officer Lupa, Officer Bess, and Robert Philbin were able to arrive and render emergency medical aid under a tremendous amount of stress. Officer Lupa and Officer Bess were able to rely on their training and equipment to save a life. Officer Mike Lupa, Officer Joe Bess, and Robert Philbin are most deserving of the Oakland Police Department Life Saving Award. snazzy award that they get to wear on their uniforms like we have over here but it, it'll actually be a little higher than the stars so 
And congratulations to the firefighters as well that were on scene uh, who helped uh, save this gentleman's life. Everybody in the uh, let's see. What see you got it. Let's see how we can do this. Let me get in the middle of these games if I can. Your friends. <laughs> Nobody's in the way, nobody's got to get up. Anybody else wants a picture of this? Because it's fine. I'm done if somebody else needs to come in. Any of the family want to get pictures while we're standing here? Get close. Sound like your friend. Don't be shy. Come on up. So whose baby is that? There? Yeah. Mine. Exactly. <laughs> that baby yeah. is adorable. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. So, Thank such a great job. Great job. Great job. Thank you, Chief. Glad to see it. Me too. Just a couple closing words. Um, I mean, you can see how proud I am of these guys. Um, but uh, it's, it's daily. It's daily. I can't... Uh, I would take up too much of the board's time if I came up here all the time giving these awards out. But um, I'm very proud of these folks. You should be proud of them. You should be proud to have these men and women patrolling your streets. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we are all bursting with pride, too. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, our next agenda item is the Oakland Fire Department Presentation of Unit Performance Awards. This is item 12 on the agenda. Acting Chief Tutkoster. All right. Thank you, Mayor, Council, friends, family that are here tonight. Uh, tonight, I'm proud to stand here before you to um, acknowledge some of the members of the Oakland Fire Department and Unit Performance Awards. So I don't know if those guys are out there ready. Uh, the first performance award that we're going to recognize tonight is uh, for Oaklawn Battalion 1 and Engine 1, and the individuals being recognized at this time is Acting Battalion Chief Mike McMillan. That's you. Uh, Lieutenant Scott Ralston. Yay. Engineer Steve McKenna. Engineer Chris Ward. And Firefighter Paramedic Pete Krause. And they are hereby awarded a unit performance award for outstanding service and life-saving actions. On March 14, 2018, Engine 1 and Battalion 1 responded as a mutual aid company to a reported house fire in the 9600 block of Richmond Avenue in Evergreen Park. Responding companies encountered a single-family home with heavy smoke and fire conditions present and a report that two citizens remained in the building unaccounted for. On the order of Evergreen Park Command, Battalion 1 took command of the rear sector and Evergreen Park firefighter and initiated an interior attack on the fire. Battalion 1 also assigned Engine 1 to conduct first floor interior firefighting and search and rescue operations for missing citizens. The Engine 1 crew located both missing citizens quickly and removed the unconscious citizens from the burning home. The quick and professional actions of Battalion 1 and Engine 1 crew provided the citizens with their best chance for survival and are a credit to the Oakland Fire Department. Presented this day, April 24, Thank you. Well done. Oh. 
home. Okay. For those that were at home, I uh, mentioned that um, what the uh, firefighters will get as a part of their award is a commendation bar that was worn on their uniform. Um, it's not quite the, the medal that you saw for the Life Saving Award. Those we have for a Medal of Merit and a Medal of Valor, which are a little bit higher um, elevation of an award, but it doesn't diminish from the uh, actions that they take uh, every day and that they took for this particular instance. Do we have anybody taking pictures, Dave? Oh, okay. Nice job there, John. All right. Our next life or unit performance award is going to Engine One, Med One, and Squad One. And the recipients of this award is Lieutenant Scott Ralston. Engineer Steve McKenna. Engineer Joe Maynard. Engineer Ed Curran. Firefighter paramedic Jason Behrens. Firefighter paramedic Pete Kraus. Lieutenant Dan Folliard. And engineer Joe Helper. No, oh, Joe Helper. Did we get Mayner? He's on call. Okay. All right. This is a unit performance award also for outstanding service and life saving actions. On March 16, 2018, Engine 1, Med 1, and Squad 1 were dispatched to the Yokohan Racket Club for a person in cardiac arrest. Upon arrival, the crews encountered a male patient in his 50s who had suffered a cardiac arrest with bystander CPR in progress. The crews took over medical care for the patient, which included defibrillation and additional advanced life support intervention. The crew were able to restore a pulse and blood pressure to the patient. Later that day, the patient was extubated and was conscious and alert, recovering in the ICU Christ Hospital. The actions of Engine 1, Med 1, and Squad 1 crews saved the life of an Oakland resident. Presented this day, 24th of April, 2018. You know what, why don't we stay there because we'll get everybody in the picture. We're gonna, the next uh, award that we're going to uh, present this evening is a special recognition award for outstanding service and life-saving action. And this is presented to Bob Philbin. On March 16, 2018, an Oaklawn resident was stricken with a heart attack at the Oaklawn Racquetball Club. Fellow Oaklawn resident Bob Philbin utilized an automatic external defibrillator in his own CPR to render emergency first aid prior to the arrival of Oaklawn fire and police personnel. The American Heart Association recognizes the prompt bystander CPR and use of an automatic external defibrillator dramatically increases the survival chance of people experiencing sudden death out of the hospital. The actions of Bob Philbin undoubtedly contributed to the successful resuscitation of the Oakland Red, presented this day, 24th of April, 2018. Bob, thank you very much.
Great job. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Nice job. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you and congratulations. And we've got one last unit performance award. And our final series of unit performance awards this evening goes to Oaklawn Engine Number no. 2 and Med 3. And this award goes to Lieutenant Tim Radke, Engineer Sharon Janiszewski, Engineer Kevin Lynn, Firefighter Paramedic Keith Giles, Firefighter Paramedic Bill Durth, and Firefighter Paramedic Pat Hornick. And Pat happens to be one of our newest members, a probationary member, so it's usually unlikely that in your probationary period you get an award this quick in your career. So this unit performance award for outstanding service and life-saving actions on March 27, 2018, Engine 2, Med 3 responded to 8924 South Ridgeland for the report of a 60-year-old male in a barber chair who was unconscious and not breathing. On arrival, Engine 2 found a pulseless and not breathing patient and immediately began life-saving efforts. A short time later, Med 3 and Engine 2 initiated advanced life support measures with the assistance of Engine 2. The, crew was the patient was transported to Christ Hospital where he is making a recovery in the IC. The skills and expertise of the crew saved the life of this Oaklawn resident. Presented this day, 24th of April, 2018. In closing, like Chief Palmer said, you know, this, these actions that we recognize tonight are just a, a microcosm of what they do every day out on the street. And it's truly a team effort between police and fire that uh, we come together and we get these jobs done on behalf of the residents and the visitors to the village of Oaklawn. I'm very proud of these guys. And it should be. Thank you. Very nice. Congrats to everyone. Item uh, nine is a request to approve the 2018 Oaklawn Blue Ribbon Walk. Motion to approve. On June 2nd, we have a motion from Trustee Olenichek, seconded by Trustee Phelan. Any discussion? Let's call that vote, please. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. A request to, uh, 10 is a request to approve the Liver Life Walk to be held on June 9th. May motion to approve. Thank you. Trustee Olenichik made that motion. Second. Seconded by Trustee Phelan. Any discussion? Anyone from this event here? Yes? No? Okay. Let's call that vote, please. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 11 and 12, I'm going to request a motion to postpone this. Uh, I'll move. Thank you. Trustee Olenichik made that motion, Second. seconded by Trustee Phelan. Any discussion? Oh, it was seconded. Uh, uh, the second was Trustee Phelan. Okay. Uh, let's call that vote, please. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Streit? Yes. Motion passes 4 0. Thank you. Um, we are on agenda item uh, 13, excuse me, uh, new business by village trustees. We're going to start in District 1. Trustee Desmond. No new business. Thank you. District 2. No new business. District 3. No new business. District 6. Nothing tonight. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to Item 14, Village Manager's Report. Larry? Uh, thank you, Mayor. If I could have Diana come to the podium, please. She's going to give you a, an important update regarding emergency communications. Diana?
can shut the doors. Yeah, I think he's going to do that. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to make an announcement. Um, it's we've been uh, a really we've been really busy in dispatch today, and I'm happy to announce that due to consolidation efforts, we are now dispatching for the village of Elsip. Um, as of 11 11 o'clock this morning, their police department and their fire department. Um, it took us a little over close to an hour and a half to have AT&T um, route all their 911 calls to us and their non-emergency calls. Um, and we do have uh, some of the ELSIP dispatchers with us as well now full time. Um, so it's very exciting um, for us uh, as a consolidation um, effort for the, for the state. Um, we're one of the biggest consolidations that we have in this end of uh, Southern Cook County and um, we're known for our reputation. So uh, villages want to come to Oak Lawn. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> it's been a long day and it's not over yet, but um, we're really excited to have them on board. Um, it's a great opportunity for all of us, for all the agencies combined. Um, they're all part of a cost sharing, uh, proportion sharing based on calls for service um, and a formula that we've come up with. So overall, all of the existing agencies within the Oakland Regional Communications Center will now be um, saving money as well because there'll be more to, to come in and, and we'll eventually be able to save a lot more overall. Um, it's still going on in the state of Illinois. There's a couple of other towns in our area uh, that still need to consolidate. So we may be able and get lucky to have a couple more in the future. Diana, I just want to congratulate you and your team on the hard work. And I want to congratulate and thank the Village of Alsip and their board for their confidence in us. Uh, it's, it is a great department you run, and, and we're very proud of that. Thank you. We've, yeah, we've come a long way. This has been a couple years now trying to, you know, get different consolidated efforts through the state and a lot of presentations to boards and a lot of agencies out there that are, are looking, hoping to get other towns to consolidate, and we're lucky to be able to bring them in. Yeah. Knows um, since Diane has been here, we, this this uh, dispatch center has been source of a lot of consolidation, and this cost about five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars a year to Oakland taxpayers before uh, the changes were made. That I think Diana headed uh, with Larry serving on the board down in Springfield, and there's been a lot of like everything a team effort, but I think Diana headed that up, and and. Again, this was a, a cost, a net cost to taxpayers over and above what should have been a contributory area of the village, a tune of about $600,000 a year. If I may, Mayor and Board. Yes, Larry. I think even more important, uh, Director, you've done an outstanding professional job, but the bottom line is that the police and fire of Alsip and Oak Lawn work extremely close together on the types of issues and events uh, that they have to respond to, as you heard tonight. And they do work extremely well together. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions for Diana? We're just very proud and uh, welcome aboard ALSIP. Mayor, I only have one other item, a point of information for the board. I'd be remiss. Uh, our fine village forester and arborist, Heather, Stevenson wanted to make sure that I extended the invitation to you. The annual Earth Day, Arbor Day celebration will be this Saturday, and it will be held at the Oakview Center. Uh, Oakview Center, ladies and gentlemen, is at 4625 West 110th Street in the village of Oak Lawn, and the ceremony will be at noon, and they will be planting a lollipop cran apple tree. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. And item 15 is consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are routine or have been brought forward at the direction of the Board of Trustees and will be enacted with one motion. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. A is Ordinance 180924, an ordinance amending certain sections of Title III, Chapter 4, Article J, of the Oakland Village Code pertaining to raffles, 
Uh, B is resolution 180927, a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the Village of Oaklawn Police Department and the Village of Alsip Police Department relating to the housing of arrestees. C is resolution 180928, a resolution authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement for access to GIS data between the Village of Oaklawn and the Cook County Assessor's Office. D is resolution 180929, resolution authorizing a professional services agreement with CDM Smith Incorporated to perform certain engineering services for the 2018 Sanitary Sewer Program. E is resolution 180930, a resolution authorizing the professional services agreement with CDM Smith Incorporated to perform certain engineering services pertaining to the potable water distribution main lining along Park Avenue. F is resolution 180931, resolution awarding Lindhall Brothers Incorporated the contract to, por to perform the 2018 street resurfacing project. G is resolution 180932, resolution approving the public right of way use agreement between the Village of Oak Lawn and mobile, uh, mobile light, mobile lighty LLC. H is resolution 180933, a resolution to initiate disciplinary proceedings pursuant to Title III, Chapter 1, Section 6 of the Oakland Code 2, and um, into a point uh, K. Austin Zimmer of Delgado Law Group, LLC, as hearing officer. I is resolution 180935, a resolution to initiate disciplinary proceedings against Oakland Smokes and Vapes pursuant to Title III, Chapter 15, Section 6 of the Oakland Village Code pertaining to the regulation of tobacco sales. J is Resolution 180936, a resolution approving the recommendation of the appointed hearing officer presiding over a hearing to determine whether Rahidi Enterprises Incorporated, doing business as Miami Motel, violated certain sections of the Village Code regulating businesses. May I have a motion, please, on 15. Motion approved. Okay. Madam Mayor, I'd like to pull a couple of things. Yes, Trustee Olenichek. I'd like to pull A off. Okay. <coughs> and I would like to pull G off. Okay. B. B like boy, okay. Any others? Okay, so we are voting on everything except 15A, B like boy, and G like George. Uh, there was no second. Okay. So we have a first by Tom, and then we need I a need a second. second. Okay, Trustee Olenichik is our second. Thank you, Tom. Any discussion? Okay, let's call the vote. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, A is Ordinance 815A is Ordinance 180924, an ordinance amending certain sections of Title III, Chapter 4, Article J, of the Oakland Village Code pertaining to raffles. I'd like to postpone and send that out to committee for review. Okay, we have a motion by the trustee to send that to committee and postpone. Um, which committee are we sending it to? Uh, which committee? Legislative committee? Legal and legislation. Okay, very good. Uh, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Trustee Phelan is our second. Any discussion? Let's call that vote, please. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. 15B, like boy, resolution 180927, resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the Village of Oakland Police Department and the Village of Alsip Police Department relating to the housing of arrestees. May I have a motion on 15B? Bob wanted to talk about I know, but we need a motion before Motion approved. Discussion. Thank you. Trustee Olenichik made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Trustee Desmond. And now it's open for discussion. Trustee Thank Strait. Thank you, Mayor. I had one question about this, and I sent the email to the chief. You had done a study on this to determine uh, the feasibility of it, and you one of the things that you mentioned is that you, they didn't have a lot of prisoners but based on the number that they had, that $100 per person seemed reasonable. I was wondering what that number is on an annual basis, number of prisoners. Uh, the number of prisoners that we, that also, uh, you want ALSIP's numbers? Yeah. So we looked at 2016 and 2017. 2016, they had a total of 242 prisoners. In 2017, they went down to 197. Um, that could be 
twofold. Uh, first off, it could be because they were giving more I bonds because I know the Cook County um, State's Attorney's Office and the uh, Cook County Sheriff's Office had changed their policies on bringing prisoners in for certain offenses. So that could be why those numbers went down. Um, so that th that's what we believe. Um, what I could tell you is that I would probably um, forecast that in 2018 they would be less than that. Um, I'm, I'm, I would probably forecast maybe 150 to 160. Um, and the reason why is, is, as I told you, I think that um, as we do, we try to bond more people because the state attorney's office doesn't want us holding the prisoner 24 hours and then bring them in in front of a judge. So we're figuring about 150 to 160 as an average. Okay. And that, the, my, that seems, uh, seems high, but obviously those are correct numbers. I thought it would be a lot lower, and I thought that the $100 probably wouldn't cover our liability insurance. But. Well, we factored in as well the consolidation. Um, if if we just went out and we were going to take a another community's prisoners, we would charge more. But since they are consolidating into the uh, 911 center as well, what that does is it reduces Oak Lawn's cost as well in the, in the, the consolidation group that we'll call it. Um, all the towns that have come in so far Every town that comes in, it reduces Oak Lawn's cost then to go forward to pay for maintenance of the 911 center um, and, and other things like that. So we figured to assist that and give them a reasonable number, we figured $100 would be a good number. Um, it, again, liability is always going to be there, um, but we felt that that was a fair number. Okay. Um, I felt if we went higher, they probably wouldn't have you know, brought their prisoners here. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Yeah, and we do have Bridgeview, which we have on. Which currently, we've had them on a contract since the early, or I would say the late 90s, and they're paying considerably less. So after we decide on this, I would like to renegotiate that one as well. So that'll be the next thing I'll be bringing forward. Thank you. Hey, Mayor, I have a question. Trustee. Chief, what are the options for local municipalities? How many places have lockup like us? Well, uh, most of the communities have lockups. The problem is, is now that they're being forced to consolidate by the state, they're having to pull uh, personnel. Um, and I, I'd like Diane, Diana knows a little bit more about it. But again, most of the communities go, have had lockups um, in the past, and they would hold their own prisoners. But as consolidation has taken over and more towns are coming in, it's really not viable for them to close their 911 center, which sometimes their 911 centers were actually watching the prisoners. So if they don't have a 911 center, they don't have anybody watching prisoners, which they can't do that. They have to have somebody there physically watching a prisoner in a cell in case there's a, a problem, um, either physically if they have a, a medical situation or if they attempt to, uh, you know, to do something to themselves while they're in custody. So, uh, But I'll let Diana speak to it as well. I mean, I agree with what the chief is saying, and one of the reasons for consolidation, um, the 911 center in a dispatcher, a dispatcher is, is their primary responsibilities are to take 911 calls, dispatch, police, fire, and, and first responders. A lot of municipalities, um, especially the smaller ones, which is why the state has you know, mandated these consolidations, um, and in this area, anyone under 25,000, there are a lot of agencies where that dispatcher is doing multiple jobs that they shouldn't be. They're watching prisoners. They're doing matron duties. They're doing front desk duties. They're doing all these administrative duties that don't fall under the guidelines of what 911 wireless and wireline fees are intended for. Uh, and that's another reason for the consolidation. So we there are dispatchers out there that monitor prisoner cells and, and they shouldn't have never been to begin with. So when they do take a prisoner in, once they're in the cell, it goes to the dispatcher to monitor. And when that dispatcher closes, there's no one there to, to do those duties, which they shouldn't have been doing in the first place. So post-consolidation, what are the alternatives? Where, where do prisoners go? I'm, the reason I ask is if all of this consolidation is happening, we're not building any more Are we? Is there a point where we're, to Bob's point, we're maybe taking on more liability than we should? Yes, and, and, and we've included in our agreement that we're leaving it to our lockup people as well to make the, the call whether we're going to take a prisoner in, if uh, like county does. If we bring a prisoner out to Cook County for the 5th you know, District Courthouse to attend uh, either a bond hearing or uh, uh, a preliminary hearing, usually what, what would happen is, is, is they, we either would have to transport them, but 
with our agreement, we're saying you're doing all that. We'll watch your prisoner. If something happens to him, he gets sick, you have to then come transport him to the hospital. We are not going to take our personnel off the street. They're responsible for all of it, but we are including in that agreement as well. <clears throat> our our watch commander will have the final call whether we're going to take a prisoner or not. Even with an LSIP. So if we agree with right. LSIP and we're full, we can tell them, sorry. Yes, yes. I, I wouldn't see us being that busy to where we couldn't take somebody in unless it was a mass arrest situation. And something like that, would, you know, county would obviously, we have stipulations for that where we could actually take people to Cook County before they were actually processed or anything, and then we can do the processing there. So we have, we have uh, contingency plans for that. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other discussion on that item? Uh, let's call the vote, please. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Strait? Yes. Washington? <clears throat> so moving on to item 16, it's resolution. Oops. Um, I'm sorry, G. I, how'd I miss G? I'm so sorry. G is resolution 180932, a resolution approving the public right of way use agreement between the Village of Oak Lawn and Mobile IT LLC. Um, we have a motion on G. Approved. Thank you. Trustee Thank you. Desmond made that motion. We're seconded by Trustee Strait. Any discussion? Uh, yes. Um, oh. around, about a year ago, we, we approved an ordinance um, that would require any of the cell phone companies that were um, working on village property that they would have to adhere to the uh, Prevailing Wage Act. Does this apply? Also to this, I didn't see it in the ordinance. The short answer is no. The uh, the state legislator has passed their own. Uh, I'll be bringing something back to you. I think I sent an article around last week from Pat Conley. I don't know if you saw it. I think everybody got it here on the board. Uh, there's been new a new law enacted in Illinois that uh, has taken away a lot of the uh, home rule powers from municipalities con control uh, small cell towers. So. There's going to be some um, uh, ability to come back on the rights away and some fees that we'll bring back to you. But the bottom line is that we've lost a lot of control over uh, our ability to restrict what Verizon or AT&T or you name it can put on a light pole uh, in our town and how we can control their access to it and charge them to go up there. If, if but, I may, Trustee, um, this is bad legislation, another typical example of what happens in Springfield without consulting local officials. Cable television. Cable television used to be regulated by individual municipalities, and your legislators and your congressmen gave that away through lobbyists and through aggressive efforts by telecommunication companies. Uh, you're going to see another wave because the frequent use by everybody in this room, I'm looking particularly out at some of the younger people, to your handheld devices where you're constantly streaming live data and you're looking at YouTube and you're putting an incredible demand that these technology companies have found that the cell towers are not sufficient. Now they're gonna go to light poles, they're going to go on the streets. You're going to see it may look like a birdcage or other devices. And they don't want municipalities telling them how it looks, how frequent they can be, whether they can be on one corner, another corner, whether they can be brown, green, red, yellow. So I know that Trustee Strike, I know the mayor are going to be joining Trustees Vorderer and Trustees Stalker tomorrow in Springfield and you'll be meeting with our legislative delegation, you need to tell them, bad law, bad legislation, and it's driven by the industry that wants to avoid local control and local direction. Simple as that, Tim. That's what it is. Yeah, well, I, I'm not talking about what they're putting up there. I'm talking about who's, who's going to be doing the work. Right, and that's our, that's our ability to limit it, and that's what I'm talking about. They've stripped all our powers away. But they have it. But, right, and that's what we're, that's what I'm talking about. They've they've taken away our home. But rule. I mean, as a, as a home rule community, we we can't decide. No, they who does the work on our on our property. No, no, they've included in the law 
very restrictive um, language on what municipalities can do. Basically, what the cell phone companies have said is to the legislators, listen, we don't want to deal with Oak Lawn or, and then go next door to Evergreen and have them tell us what we're going to need to do. We need access. We need to build out this infrastructure. Our clients demand it, and we can't be hung up jumping from town to town uh, and being paying one wage in one town, a different wage in our town. We need uh, more uh, freedom here. And the legislature's agreed, and the governor signed into the law. And so our ability to put in the ordinance, something like that, we want prevailing wage uh, union workers to put up, if they go above 20 feet or 30 feet or whatever, to the top of a, that we want to make sure that it's a qualified person. They've taken, they've stripped that away as part of the law. And can we not tell them, well, you know, if you want to come in and do this, you got to hire these guys. We we, are oh, we, the, we because they, we we have to issue the we have to issue them the permit. There is no permit. They can come in and do whatever they want. That's what Larry was. Why, just why, why are we even? Why is it on here? So because at least with the companies at this point in this phase in period, we're we're pressing them. We're trying to get cooperation. We're trying to get them to work with us, and to some extent, we're able we're able to sign up and get the dollar amount. Uh, how, 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 how was the yes vote tonight going to? enticed them to work with us? Well, they've agreed to work with us. They're paying the fee, and they're going to, they're going to be, this, these this company's working with us. even started before the law was passed. The law was just passed in the, or signed in the law in the last week or so. It's very new, number one. Number two, I think, uh, Tim, I'll be bringing back uh, some ideas we have on how we can restrict our access to the, to the right of ways. So we have to get more creative and find ways, but we're looking at it. We have a little window to come up with some ideas, and I'll certainly be bringing them back to them, but we are looking at it and we are working on it. And I heard you, and I'll take a look back and see if there's a way we can uh, look back at prevailing wage as well. Well, can we postpone this until after we... Uh, I, I don't know if this is time sensitive or not, I, and I, I don't know who put it on the agenda. And it, 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 what, is, what, is it, what is the benefit to the people of Oakland that we... That we going to have an executed agreement. They're going to pay the fee, which is the maximum fee that the state statute permits. Which and is what, they've like, agreed, at least at this point, Tim, to work with us on the design of the box. It's going to be on southwest <coughs> south of 95th Street, in, actually in Trustee Streit's district. And they've at least agreed at this point to work with us on, on the design. If we can get them to work with us on that box that may set a precedent for future locations. There are, there are going to be a lot more of these that are going to be coming. I mean, does the contractor they use have to be licensed? Are they going to have to get a license you know, village to work in the village? I've, I've heard your points loud and clear. We're certainly going to do our best to get encourage them. I can't dictate, but I can encourage them to use um, appropriate labor and to pay pay the prevailing wage, we, we we will we will do that, Tim, and press them as far as we can press them, but the state law dictates how far we can go. Well, they're only going to pay us two hundred and fifty dollars. They're going to be paying five hundred dollars per. It's only at this time. It's only one location. And one device, on a on a wooden, um, I believe it's a ComEd pole that they're placing on. Is so it's not one of our our decorative street lights in downtown. It's not around the train station, but that kind of what alarmed us. We were concerning: uh, Are they going to come down into the center of the town and start going where we have no overhead wires? We buried all the wires. This location it happens to be an overhead. Um, Comed pole and overhead lines. Yeah, I mean, I don't see a, a sense of urgency here. I mean, uh, can we not wait until well, we let see? Me, let me go a little bit further. I'm sure you've seen the green pedestals around town. Throughout town, those pedestals are owned by AT and T, Comcast, other utility companies. Um, that's another concern. The state really takes away our ability to control what goes on the ground. They've agreed there's no need, part of this agreement, negotiations, there won't be a need for a, a ground-mounted pedestal that 
is the device that houses um, a lot of the wiring that you will see the, the maintenance trucks pull up and, and uh, periodically go into that box and make switch outs of some of the technology in it. Uh, they've agreed there's no need to put it on the ground. They'll incorporate it in the air. That's another direction we'd like to have them do is limit the number of boxes on the ground. So they're working with us, Tim. There'll probably be f five other, minimal five other companies that are going to come to us. This is the first one. First one, but there'll be other companies coming to us, and if we can point to one that's working with us and we have an agreement, I think we got a little bit. We, we, have, Madam, yes. we seem to have the agreement seems to be on their terms. Right, Ma Madam Chairman. Yes. If I understand what you're saying, this is a new law, and it's good that these people are working with us. But in the future, uh, if I understand the new law correctly. Don't have to work with us. They pretty much can do what they want. I would agree with that. To you, some would extent. you would agree right with now. That. Yes, I would agree with your with your summation. Yes. I think you're on to it. Yes, but I mean, there is going to be some wiggle room. There's a window here for us to come back and try to put some more fees in, possibly. But the law just passed, and we're looking at it. And we're going to be coming back. Uh, I can just tell you that every you know, I got a phone call and a couple texts from other municipal lawyers. Everybody wants to know what every other town's doing. Nobody really knows what to do at this point. Everybody realizes that a lot of power was just taken away from the villages when it comes to these small cell towers. Hey, and I read, Next I, step I read is your how debriefing. Do, how, how, how do we regulate? Yeah. yeah, I read your debriefing, but here's what, what bothers me most about it, is before we had the ability to keep them in certain areas, have certain types of uh, protectionism that they weren't popping up all over the place, uh, now with the new law, based off of our great legislators in, in Springfield, we don't even have the ability to control where they're going to be and how they're going to look in the village of Oklahoma. Correct. Correct. And we don't have the, the control of saying that uh, village of Oaklawn is proud to be a prevailing wage village, and we have a prevailing wage ordinance, and the people that could come in here, they can subcontract and put anybody in here. That's correct. I mean, th this is a, a company from California. We have no way of telling them, hey, you know what, you, you know, at least, you know, offer the work to some of our people. Yeah, but the problem that I have is we're home rule. So they basically have said, now as a home rule, you don't even have the deciding factor in your own backyard of what's going to happen. And we've seen this before with home rule where they've restricted and taken powers away from home rule communities in the, in the legislature. I mean, uh, you know. This isn't the first time they've done it. They've done it on other occasions, right? So this is another example of them, you know, you know, taking away powers from uh, from villages. Yeah. So so basically, if we vote on this, it's good, but it's not good. Well, if, and if I, we don't vote on it, then they're going to come ahead and do it any way they want to do it. If if I could, one more stab at it. I'll try to be clear, uh, Trustee Desmond. Uh, the representative for this company has been a good communicator. He knows it's on the agenda. You approve it. We're going to go back to him, and we're going to dig to get whatever we can. I will bring up the prevailing wage rate because that's something that you as a board have, um, have initiated and have fairly carried it out. We've done it with cell towers. We've done it on construction on village property, and it's the right thing to do. That's all I can, I can do is um, ask for him to cooperate and listen, and I can report back to you whether he agrees or doesn't agree. I'll let you know. But short of that, you're right. The state is, we were not consulted in this. Lobbyists very smartly, because they know about cable te television, it's the same companies, same <coughs> communication companies said, hey, you got to put this through or every little municipality is going to try to put in their little wrinkle in it, and we don't want to deal with them, period. And the legislator said, okay, fine. Give me your campaign check. Sorry, but I had to add that. <laughs> well, it's, 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 that's the truth. But I, I don't see uh, if we want to negotiate this, surely we should be doing it before we, we approve the resolution. We don't have any negotiation authority when the state passed this law 
that applies to all municipalities, home rule or not home rule. It's pretty so, frustrating. Well, it, it, I'm still a little confused here. If, if we have no say in this, why are we voting? What are we voting on? Because Larry thinks we're going to get 500 bucks, which in a month from now we won't, or a week from now we won't. Don't tell well, him. Well, yeah. let's... Uh, <clears throat> so the, the, the resolution is just to try and get something from them? Uh, yeah, I'm always trying to get something. <laughs> <laughs> then why not go to 1,000 bucks or 5,000 bucks? Because <laughs> this the state capped it. I I'd be asking for a lot more, but <laughs> I can't. <laughs> this this technology is is just exploding, and the devices are were on what N NG8. I, I mean, it just continues to get more sophisticated, better. It's great technology, great, but they're using municipal right away, owned by the taxpayers of this community. And they don't, they just lobby for what they think they ought to pay. There is no negotiation. Okay, I'm going to call the vote on this one. Trustee Olenichik? No. Trustee Desmond? No. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Stripe? Yes. Mayor Barry? Yes. Motion passes 3 2. Thank you, Board. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, item 16, resolution 180937, a resolution waiving the competitive bidding requirements and awarding Vision Technology Solutions, LLC, the contract to redevelop the village website. May I have a motion move. on 16. We have a motion from Trustee Phelan to table. Second. Do you care to table or move to committee, sir? Table. Okay, we have a motion to table and a seconded by uh, Trustee Olenichik. Any discussion? Let's call that vote, please. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Stripe? Yes. Motion passes to table. Thank you. 17 is Village Clerk's Report. Jane? Approval of semi-monthly disbursements number 2018-08D, dated April 24, 2018, in the amount of $1,447,831.13. Thank you. May I have a motion on 17A, please? So moved. Thank you. That was Trustee Olenichik? Right. Trustee Strait. Okay. Second. And seconded by Trustee Phelan. Any discussion? Let's call that vote, please. Trustee Olenichik? Yes. Trustee Desmond? Yes. Trustee Phelan? Yes. Trustee Strait. Just, just a couple of reminders. The Oakland Lions Club Walk Run will be Sunday, April 29th, beginning at Richards High School at 9 a.m. And also the Oakland MS Walk will be on Sunday, May 6th, also beginning at Richards High School at 9 a.m. Please come out and support these great causes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Item 18 is Village President's Report. Just a moment. I have to sneeze. Maybe so moved. <coughs> Excuse Bless me. You. Bless you. I was holding that in. I'm sorry. Uh, all I've got to, I know, all I've got to say under general village matters is the Arts Commission has requested that I announce, everyone's waiting for this exciting announcement, our, our snowman contest winner. Um, so they are excited. Um, they had many awesome entries, thanks to the bountiful snow from Mother Nature last winter. Um, it's nice to talk about snow in the past tense. Let's hope we're done with it. Um, but the third place winner was the staff of the Ronald McDonald House in District 4. They did a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing and the, a beautiful snowman. And then the second place winner was the Boys Family in District 2. They did a great job. But the winner was in District 4, Sandy Gray. She won the first prize. She gets a $50 check from the Arts Commission. And her um, snowman was pretty awesome. If you like the Cubs, you'd be happy. If you like the Sox, you'd be happy. And if, you know, if it, it had pink and blue and all the different, uh, it was pretty awesome. So if anyone wants to see that picture, I have it here. Congratulations to Sandy Gray. And my iPad's freaking out. There we go. And that's really all I have to say. Uh, congratulations to the winners. And this contest is getting bigger and better every year. So as much as we don't like snow, we could at least have fun with the snow. So congratulations and thanks to the Arts Commission uh, for that contest. Um, 
Item uh, 19, a motion, motion. to adjourn. Double. Trustee Bilinichik made that motion. Do I have a second? A second. Trustee Desmond is our second. Any discussion? Let's call that vote, please. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. We're adjourned at 8.33 p.m. Thank you, everyone.